contrary to popular belief, beds are actually one of the worst and slowest ways to find ancient debris in Minecraft. I have no idea why people thought that beds were a good idea. They're slow. TNT is much more worth your time. It is just, just beds are cheap and that's exactly what their result is. Sorry, Captain Sparkles. I'm not going to run into any ancient debris for ages. The same might be true for you. If you want to know the best way, here it is. This farm, uh, uh, it's more of a machine. This really ridiculous machine was designed by Techman88, who was featured in one of Ray's works videos recently. Well, it wasn't actually that recently, actually, now that I think about it. Wow, I'm getting old. Detailing how to get netherite really fast, but no one really made a great tutorial on how to build it. So yeah, go subscribe to Raiseworks and Techman88. This is not my design and all credit goes to them. This is just to promote them, I guess. And, you know, to help you guys find netherite faster. Everything you need will be in my inventory. And just take a screenshot, pause the video, grab everything you need to get the coral fans. Shut up stupid nether portal noises. You will need a silk touch pickaxe and you'll need to go to a coral reef. And the composter and all this weird stuff, you're gonna see what it does later. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're if you're on bedrock, just uh you might as well just click away now. This doesn't work in bedrock. You have movable tile entities, just be grateful. Us in Java edition, we have to suffer with our stupid hoppers that can't be moved. Yeah, it's it's really annoying. So consider this as your uh, compensation that you get movable tile entities. This uses a mechanic called TNT duplicating. It's kind of OP, but when you think about it, we needed something to compensate us from your movable tile entities. Now go away and never come back. I'm joking, please come back. I need more views. You'll need another portal, obviously. You're going to get netherite. It's called netherite for a reason. Now that you're a nether, look around for a flat space with not much what with not too much lava nearby. This looks like a nice spot. You want to clear out any like messy bits of land like this. Just mo remove it with your pickaxe. I mean, I'm assuming you have a pickaxe. If you don't have a pickaxe and you have all of this stuff, well then uh, this, there's something wrong. We're going to have to get rid of that lava later. Oh, oh yeah, you might also want to be in brackets. That's kind of optional. Not really optional, it's kind of necessary. You might need to get buckets. Next thing you want to do is grab your building blocks of choice and make sure it's around Y50. You want to get to Y50 and then actually go up one more block. So you're at Y51. So now we can get rid of all that messy debug screen -ness. Place one block here, one block here. Grab your pistons. Place a piston facing outwards, not that direction. If you do it that direction, you will, the machine will not work. Place one here and one here. And then you will want to place one slime block here and here, and then get down somehow. I'm just gonna. Oh! Then you want to have a diagonal block coming off both of these, just like that. Have that two blocks out and don't want that connected. So it's kind of floating like that. Take take your time. Pause the video if you're not if you're not following, but just try and stay with me here. Place a block out from this one here on both sides. So keep it um, symmetrical. Down and out two. That's pretty much all the slime blockness done. Get two coral fans on each side wait for them to all turn dead like this. It shouldn't take too long. Then just place some TNT in between these. Come back up your pillar. Place a detector rail here, making sure that's facing towards the pistons. And here, place a minecart on top of these detector rails, being careful not to move them. And those will stay right there. And take your cobblestone walls and place them on the end of both of these. You may want to actually have a look around to make sure there's not too much lava nearby. I've actually failed. There is a big lava lake. But also, if you want, just dig down three blocks, place a composter, 
sit inside it like that. Place a sticky piston over your head, break a block here, and place a lever here, and flick it on. Not, not there. That will break things. And click it. You will actually be able to see through blocks and see blocks like this. Lava, lava, lava. That's not good. We don't want lava. We want buckets to scoop up lava, because lava is the same as water. It kind of stops you from stops TNT from working, so you don't really want that. After you've had a look around and decided if you actually want to build your farm here after all, I mean if there was a giant lava thing underneath it wouldn't really work at all, so you might need to relocate this. Probably should have said that before all of this, oh well you've got your farm here now unless you're too lazy to pull it apart. Now for stage two, you want to come back, yeah I know it's another pillar, just you can clean it up later. And you'll probably want to, if you haven't been using consistent blocks then you'll just 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 do it just use some cobblestone here it's better and make an l shape like this it's, you know how if you play chess this is basically the knight l then grab an observer and make sure that this is facing into this block when you place it not like that that yeah that that is an example of what not to do make sure the face no, not that face. And now this is the interesting part. You will want to place a leaf block right here. Huh. Anyway, grab your redstone dust and wire it ac across here just like that. After that, uh, you will want to create a fast clock. So this utilizes the fact that when a log goes in front of a leaf, this leaf goes, ah, there's a log. I'm growing all of a sudden. And this observer goes, ah, this leaf is growing all of a sudden. Weird. Anyway, I'll just make some redstone out my butt. And so then it will power this redstone, and these pistons will get powered, and then out comes your TNT magic. But don't turn anything on yet. That will break things. Next thing you want to do is put a temporary block here, say netherrack. Put a slime block on top of the netherrack. A block of redstone on top of that netherrack. And a piston facing into this slime block. So I'm just going to build up here and have the piston facing into there. Yep, that that happens. That's why we haven't put wood there yet. Otherwise, that would have broken things. So place a lever here. And if you flick that on, that will just turn off and stop being annoying. Then you can remove this netherrack, this netherrack, and this you can replace as wood. Just be very careful, as soon as you turn that lever on, it will kind of break things, so place some wood here, it can be any orientation, I'm pretty sure, and there, that is basically almost done, the only thing you are missing is just a little extra s couple stuffs, you want to put a furnace on top of this leaf block, a cobblestone block right there with a piece of redstone dust on top get rid of that block you also need a repeater to face right into there so how have I forgotten that many stuff there we go that is your machine complete but don't turn it on yet there is just one more thing you have to do to these are a couple of safety features place some cobblestone walls underneath this fan just three here one two and then three here this will prevent the tnt from going rogue and spitting out the wrong spots that's pretty much it you can remove all of your pillars before you start it this is very important make sure you dig a hole right underneath these walls so from here three four five by seven one two three four five six seven one two three four five one two three four five six five by seven hole just dig down about mm, say 10 to 12 blocks and then you should be safe now that your hole is clear out you're actually ready to go just plunk it there and flick it Just run this a couple times till the hole's a bit deeper. 
Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking. Here we have our first piece of piece the pe peach our perth a perth peach of patient to breed. All right, now if you're if you would like, you can go down there, scoop up the lava. It might become an issue later. Uh, so I'll just go into creative mode and grab a bucket. If you're in survival mode, you can just grab a bunch of buckets, go down yourself. It shouldn't be too tedious. I mean, it's just a bit of lava, you know. Get rid of that lava. Now you're ready to turn the entire machine on. Now you want to come down here and come to around, press F3, around Y20. So you can build a little platform This around where this ancient debris spawned. You want to make sure you are lined up with this, uh, this TNT right here. So the TNT will come out here and here. So take note of these coordinates. So for me that is at 19, 92. Come down and then right at Y22, obsidian right there. So that lines, that should line up straight under this block here. If I fall straight down, I should land on the obsidian. Which means that to continually, to keep uh, staying under this duper, I want to build out two blocks this way and three blocks this way. So three blocks that way, two blocks this way. It's very important. Make sure this platform is aligned with the TNT. Pretend there's TNT here and here, because that's where the TNT will come from. That will just land on that platform right here, clearing out lots of area. You can raise this platform later. That will require a little more obsidian, but is a little more risky as a rogue TNT may fly up and hit the machine. Techman also suggested that you can put in a redstone repeater right here on a singular tick to uh, vary these pistons to possibly have a larger propulsion to make these uh, the TNT go further out. So this lava lake has become a massive problem here. See, I didn't build it far enough away from it, but that won't happen to you because you won't make silly mistakes like me. So you can come around, scoop all this lava, and look at all of this ancient debris. You can just see so much of it. There's two here, there's a three vein here, there's two more here. So in total, we probably got about 20 pieces of ancient debris all around here, and we and we can keep going as well. So if you want, you can take this up another five or six blocks, one, two, three, four, five, and just build another identical platform right above it. This will allow the Jupiter to go higher, but also highly risk um, TNT coming back up. So we'll just run that for a little bit so we don't run too much risk. Then you can come through this area in survival mode with your armor, elytra, pickaxe, and Oh, whatever, you, you don't need elytra, you can just go around, you can see all the netherite, go straight over to them, and don't do that. The reason this works is because ancient debris doesn't get blown up by TNT, and if you've never made a TNT duper before, yeah, this probably is a bit overwhelming for you to take in, that that little machine made this much destruction, and no, please do not use this to grief your friend's base. It will, it, it, it just, no. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you really enjoyed it and want to see other content. Happy ancient debris farming, and I'll see you in the next one.